I have the laziest job in America. This is me at 10 a.m. This is me at 11 a.m. And this is me 10 minutes later. I get paid $250 for working around 30 minutes a day. But is it the laziest job? Well, I made a lazy job calculator to measure exactly how lazy a job can actually be. This is the life of a substitute teacher. So I'm a high school substitute teacher, which basically means I babysit teenagers. Here's what my average day looks like. At 7.50, I leave the house. I have a rear view camera now, so I forgot how to back up by turning around. I get to school, sign in, and be at my class at 8.15. I take 15 minutes to look at the instructions and to make sure that I have the appropriate worksheets. At 8.30, class starts. Hi guys, my name is... Mr. Vaughn. From 8.30 to 8.40, I take roll, read the instructions, and pass out the appropriate worksheets. By 8.40, I'm back on my seat and on my computer. Now this leads to the first lazy job test, the fat guy test, which measures how much a fat guy would like my job. And we measure this by seeing how long you have to be on your feet for the day. This is what I do all day. Whee! Nothing. I just sit here and watch the class. As a sub, I have to be on my feet for 10 minutes every class. I have around three classes per day, so I had to stand for about half an hour in an eight hour work day for my job. If you put half an hour into the fat guy calculator, you will get a score of 9.3, which means fat guys would really like this job. Then at 10 o'clock, class ends and I have a 10 minute break. At this school, there's something called flex where teachers help students in particular areas. But since I'm a sub, I don't have it, so I have a whole hour off. At 11, my next class starts and I have to go back to work. Believe it or not, sitting around and doing nothing is actually pretty hard work. Sometimes the best part of my day is when students come up to me and ask to go to the bathroom. It can get pretty lonely as a sub. And sometimes the worst part of my day is when too many students ask to go to the bathroom because I know they are ditching class. But what am I gonna do? Am I not gonna let them go to the bathroom? That's the tough decision that I had to make every day. Which leads me to test number two, the zombie test. Since zombies don't have functioning brains, they have a very hard time making decisions. So and this test measures how mentally demanding your job is by figuring out how many decisions you have to make per day with a max of 10 decisions. If you make more than 10 decisions per day, you don't have a lazy job. So for me, I would say I had to make around one decision per day. It's pretty easy. So if I put a one in for the zombie test, I would get a lazy score of nine, which means zombies would really like my job. Now, at this point, you may love being a substitute teacher or you may absolutely hate it because it is so darn boring. Well, here are some honest pros and cons of being a sub. The first major downside to being a sub is that there's no career advancement. This is it. The next step would be to be a teacher. And that's for people who don't mind working hard and being poor. The second downside is that you have to find your own job during the summer months because all the kids are out of school. And the biggest downside of them all is that girls don't want to date substitute teachers. It's a sad fact, but it's true. This is why most substitute teachers are single. However, the biggest pro to being a substitute teacher is that they have the freedom to do whatever they want, including not having sex. Substitute teachers get to choose the days that they want to work. 
They don't have to bring work home with them and they can do what they want during the class. For me, I'm a substitute teacher because it allows me to pursue my dream of being a famous YouTuber with a lot of money. For millennials who are still soul searching for what they want to do, or if you are just unemployed, subbing provides you with the basic amount of money that you need to survive until you can make it. I may never make it as a YouTuber and I may never make my parents proud, but I can make videos as a sub and that makes me happy. At 12.45, I have 30 minutes for lunch before my last class. However, and this teacher doesn't have a sixth period class. So and that's my day. On most days though, I would get home anywhere from 3.30 to 4 at the latest. However, I would just like to clarify that this is only for high school substitute teachers. Elementary and middle school substitute teachers actually have to teach, which is not worth the money. Which brings me to the last test of the lazy job calculator which is the in-law test. The in-law test measures how much your in-laws would like your job. So in other words, how much money your job makes. The more money your job makes, and the more your in-laws like you. I mean, like your job. The reason why this test is important is because being lazy is only a privilege for the rich. You can't be lazy if you had to pay your bills. Trust me, I'm not subbing because I like being around phone-addicted teenagers who have shoes that are worth more than my entire wardrobe. So, let's get to the numbers. As a sub, I get paid $250 a day. In the month of September 2022, I worked a total of 18 out of 21 possible school days, which means I made $4,500 in that month. After taxes and deductions, I am left with $3,760. Now, that may seem like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but you need to understand that all school districts have a total of 180 school days, which means that the max that I can make out of any school year is $45,000 a year. If a person makes a federal minimum wage of $7.25, they would make $15,000 a year. So my salary is at three times the federal minimum wage. If I put $45,000 into the calculator, then I would get a score of three, with one being $15,000 and 10 being $150,000. Anyone making over $150,000 does not have a lazy job. So uh, in-laws would not like my job, but that's not really a problem for most subs because they're not married anyways. So if you add up all the scores of the lazy job calculator, you would get a score of a 21, which means that being a substitute teacher is pretty lazy. But there's definitely some room of improvement. Mainly, they should pay me more for doing exactly what I'm doing right now, which is almost nothing. But I would like to get more money. So if you think you might like being a sub, then you should consider applying. School districts are always looking for new subs, and the requirements are pretty easy. For California, all you really need is a bachelor's degree and to take the CBEST. I know that for other states out there, like New Hampshire, you don't even need a college degree. You just need a high school degree. If you have those qualifications, then everything else is just paperwork. But please keep in mind that the pay can be very different from one school district to another. And the most important thing is that if you have a lazier job than I do, please let me know because I want it. Thank you very much and please subscribe so my parents will be proud of me. Bye.